Hey guys, welcome back to another Rust tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over mutability, functions, conditionals, and loops. Before we get started, I just want to say that I got a new mic, so hopefully the audio quality is much better now. Unlike most other languages, by default, all variables in Rust are immutable. What do I mean by this? Let's take a look at a quick example. We'll declare a variable x and give it the value 10. Then we'll print it out. followed by reassigning x to be 12, then we'll print it out again. We see that we get an error saying we cannot assign twice to an immutable variable. Because x is immutable, we can't change the value of it. How do we make it mutable then? In Rust, to make a variable mutable, we add the mute keyword before the variable. Now we run our code again, and we see it runs perfectly. This is the case for all variables, including arrays. Let's make an array consisting of 2, 3, 5, and another 3. Then let's try and change the second element to be 12. We see that, again, we get the same error. And again, when we add the mute keyword, the problem is solved. Next, let's talk about functions. To declare functions in Rust, we use the fn keyword, followed by the function's name. Then we have the parameters the function takes in, in brackets, and an arrow indicating the return type of the function. Let's write a function that squares positive integers. We'll start by writing fn, and we'll give our function the name square. Then we'll take in an unsigned integer parameter called x, and we will specify this function to return an unsigned integer as well. Normally in other languages, we would write return x times x. But in Rust, if the last line of a function does not end in a semicolon, Rust will interpret that line as the return value. So instead, we can just write x times x. We'll run this function on the second element in our array, and assign it the return value to the second element of our array as well. We run our code, and we see that the second element has been changed from a 3 to a 9. What if we want to make a function that mutates our array instead? Well, first we would need to change our parameter to take in a reference and we can remove our return. Then we will need to dereference our x variable to mutate our array. Finally, we change the code in our main function to pass in a u32 reference. And let's try and run this. And we get an error saying that we cannot assign to a reference. But didn't we set our array to be mutable? This is because Rust distinguishes between an immutable reference and a mutable reference. To specify a reference that we can mutate, we must add the mute keyword. If we run this again, we see that this time the code ran successfully. On to conditionals. In Rust, we have the if, else if, and else statements that can be used to run certain pieces of code only when conditions are met. To use them, we write if followed by condition. In this case, the condition is if a is less than b. Then we have an else if that only runs if the previous if was not satisfied and the condition we specified is satisfied. In this case, the condition is if b is less than a. Finally, we have an else statement that runs if none of the above if and else if statements were satisfied. Let's see this in action. We run our code and we get a less than b. And if we change a to 14, now we get a greater than b. And if we change a equals 12, we get a equals b. 
One pattern that is very common is we have some variable that is assigned a default value, then we want to conditionally assign it a value that's actually meaningful. In this case, C will be the minimum of A and B. We run our code and we see that it works, but we can actually make C immutable and remove the default zero value. You see, Rust is able to understand that we will be assigning C a value in the if and else if statements. It understands that even though C is immutable, it doesn't contain a value. So we are able to assign a value to our immutable variable. And C is assigned a value by line 10 before it is used by anything, so Rust doesn't complain. So let's run this again, and we see it still works. Rust takes this a step further by allowing you to assign an if and else statement to variables for cases where you need to conditionally assign a value and never change it again. We can run our code again and we see everything works. A side note is to make sure that your variables is guaranteed to have a value. There are three types of loops in Rust. All of them are equivalent to each other, but some provide better ergonomics than others. Let's take a look. The first type of loop we have is simply loop. Using the loop keyword, we create infinite loops that go on forever until we use the break statement. In this case, we have counter i that we will be printing out and incrementing every iteration. And we can see that it goes on forever. Now let's add an if statement that breaks the loop when i reaches 10. and we can see it only prints up to nine. One cool thing about loop is you can actually assign it to a variable. Let's say you want to increment counter up to 10, then assign a the value of counter multiplied by two. We would have something like this, where we have a break followed by the value we want to assign to a. Now let's print the value of counter and a. We see that counter has been changed to 10, and A has been assigned the value 20. The next loop we have is the while loop. It works the same as most other languages. We start with the while keyword, followed by some condition. And while that condition is true, we continue to run the code inside the while loop. So if we want to recreate the infinite loop, we would put true as the condition. But let's try and print 0 to 9 again. Rather than having a dedicated if and break statement, we just need our condition to check that i is less than 10. And we can see that we get the same results. Now let's add an array into the mix and make our loop print the elements of our array. We have our counter i, it goes from 0 to the length of the array, and print the values at those indices of our array. And we can see it works perfectly. The last loop we have is the for loop. To use a for loop, we write it as for something in some range. What do I mean by this? Let's try and recreate our 0 to 9 again. We would say for i in 0 dot dot 10. This means for every value starting from 0 and ending at 10, assign it to i and run our loop. So the first iteration of our for loop, i would be 0, the next iteration, i would be 1, and the next iteration, i would be 2, and so on. And we can see that it does print from 0 to 9. And it works with the array example as well. But we can improve the array example even more. We can change our for loop to for a in ampersand array. And this will give us every value in our array, starting from the first and ending on the last, and assign it to a. This way we no longer need the counter that was only ever used to index our array. Okay, that's all the things I wanted to cover in this video. Leave a comment down below if you found this video useful or if you have ideas on how to improve it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.